Today's story is a really big example of how you can get a bit of news, write a headline, have an article, but that really you do need to dive a little bit deeper to see what is actually going on. Mm -hmm. Because there is a hell of a lot behind the surface of this that feels very weird, very wrong, very scummy, and also is kind of interesting. So, uh, Glover. It's a Nintendo 64 game, and it's coming out on 420. It was just announced, and that was, of course, to a whole wave of, you know, headlines. Mm -hmm. The game is completely redone from the original source code and improved for modern PCs, according to the developer and publisher Pico Interactive. So there you go. Hit print, <laughs> story done, mm -hmm. happy, happy. We have a nice little story of game preservation, an old cult hit uh, coming out. But that's not actually what's going on. <laughs> not even close. Because we take a look into Pico Interactive's history, mm. and we found a lot of dirt. Indeed. <laughs> so there's more. Uh, there's more than one side. Take things to the grain of salt. Uh, grain of salt. But we mm. have interesting things to cover. So yeah. Matt, mm -hmm. crimes of Pico Interactive. What has happened? Yeah. So the the first thing you'll notice whenever you you know you you see the article, you're okay. There's the Glover coming out. Uh, go to the tweet and you immediately see massive amounts of backlash in the replies. You're like, oh, interesting. And it turns out that people have an issue with Pico Interactive because of, well, let's say their approach to preservation. Because you think of preservation, you think, okay, well, we'll make this really shiny. We'll make it pretty good. We'll preserve it in its original form as well. We'll make it available, you know, so everyone can have it. Well, Pico said... Uh, just a couple weeks ago, the era of commercial preservation is here. And then someone said, well, maybe if you actually release the original ROMs instead of the edited, which gives you a hint into what they may be doing that isn't quite preservation, as opposed to the likes of Night Dive or the decompilation projects. And then they go, you know, what's the point? What historic value does a ROM with unfinished graphics or a freezer bug have? It's like, well, when does preservation end and when does you're just making it something different begin. And this is where you've got the, the problem because they say commercial preservation is preservation that's free from other commercial interests. Because obviously, you know, the problem with preservation is someone owns their rights and goes, they've got, they've got the legal gun to shoot everyone with. Yeah. Oh, sorry, you want to preserve that really old game? Well, we own the rights and we want to sell it instead. And Pico's approach is, you know, people who do it for the love of preservation are only one DMCA from being taken down and one greedy lawyer away from financial ruin. But it's okay, because Pico own all the rights to all these games, and they'll never do that. They'll never DMCA prototype ROMs or, you know, go to a fan project like Nintendo often do and say, oh, sorry, you're doing something cool. That's ours. Get stuffed. And that's the thing where, you know, there's a great example here where the, in Glover, there was an N64 build, and they were like, here it is. It's on our site. It's preserved. Everyone can have it. But anyone knows, you know, it's just, it's on a website. That doesn't matter. Website goes down, it's gone. Server yeah. gets attacked, gone. Anything gone. The only way you can preservation the digital stuff is proliferation. That's Absolutely. how it works. And then someone's like, okay, I'll just rehost it because you're fine with this being preserved. Like, no, we want it on our server only. Please remove it. No one else is allowed to archive it. And that's like the philosophical issue that starts the whole debate, which is they're just going, they're, they're taking the name of preservation and going, no. That's not what we mean. We mean we get to make money. No one else gets to preserve it. It's commercial preservation. Yeah. That's yes. Exactly, and this exactly that. is going to <laughs> rub against the actual game preservation community incredibly. Yeah. I mean, even I mean, even for in terms of digital proliferation, you look at what's happening in uh, the like with Steam blocking purchases in Russia, and now people can't play those games there. You're like, well, physical games would work there that's where you've got a whole problem of access and stuff as well but to move on to what they actually have more specific problems with here and because you look at like it's not just a philosophical problem you look at what people have done and go oh how are you getting away with this yeah oh because you're technically correct so they have 55 games on steam for sale they own the rights to over 150 ips 55 games are on sale for mostly around five to ten dollars kind of mark up to like fifteen dollars i think and it's basically zero work whatsoever. It's, you know the way people reel on Nintendo for doing things like hmm. getting the ROM and just putting it on an emulator and then selling that Nintendo Switch online? People are like, I oh, will, I mean, it's the same dev, so it's 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 lazy product-wise, but at least the developers are getting the money or, you know, the 
people who uh, rightfully own it and made it. Yeah. In this case, what they're doing is they're going to buy, they're going around specifically shopping for licenses from defunct developers and f getting licenses in ways that they don't have to actually speak to original developers. There's an interview he did with a couple, of, uh, with someone, and it was going through ways where, you know, basically would skirt around as much as of the ownership as possible to talk to as few people as possible, go directly to the rights owners and go, hey, can we license that? But, you know, don't involve these people. Just so then they could go, okay, well, we own the right, so we are legally entitled to do this, which is get an open source emulator that other people have made and worked on, get the ROM, which someone else dumped, someone else preserved, put up an emu paradise or something like that or one of the, you know, whatever piracy site you're going to go for for your ROMs. Download that, put it in a package, sell it on Steam, $10 a pop. Perfect. Bit of leechy. <laughs> Very leechy behavior, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. It's, it's just flipping this shit. Yeah, that, that's There's exactly so little, it. so little work. Yeah, uh, the, one of, one of the worst examples <laughs> I saw was with a game called Forty Wings on PC, which is this old classic uh, action platformer. And uh, someone who's really involved in like emulation left this review, which is you know I put five minutes in. <laughs> For Pico, I suggest not responding to this. Uh, the open source emulation is used, which is a good emulator, but you're paying the money for an open source emulator. The uh, the BIOS that they use for the emulator is really low performance and low accuracy. So it's not even a good experience of the original game. And then there's no customization whatsoever. And they've just completely did, they've been completely done it wrong. And then later in this, uh, later in this, the reviewer goes, listen, here's all the settings you want to use for this emulator to make this game actually run correctly. And it's just the stuff of the, owner the one who's making the money did none of the work whatsoever didn't even didn't even fine tune looking at the, like the nitpick here even like just yeah. having partial controller support like I, I get it it can take a little bit of time to set that up mm -hmm. nicely with a rom yep. but you're selling it for 10 bucks or with yeah. a, an emulator you're, you're selling it so yes mm -hmm. they have got 55 games in steam and it's mostly the same story mm -hmm. yeah except which... yeah <laughs> except for one specifically bad one which is uh Bubsy Twofer. Yes. Yeah, actually, before Bubsy, I actually realized I own one of these games. I didn't know, but I own Super Super Noah's Ark 3D, which is <laughs> a uh, which is just a Wolfenstein, but it's Noah's Ark, so you're going around getting animals to bring onto the Ark. That's I don't great. know why I own it, but it was like 160 or two quid or something, and I bought it. I was like, this is okay, but it's just a DOS emulator. It's just a DOS emulator and a ROM. I'm like, okay, sure, whatever, fine, I paid one quid, whatever. Uh, but with uh, Bubsy Twofer, what happened was they put the uh, SNES 9X uh, emulator in, and just just picked a build off the open source site, went, job's good, put the ROM in, they have the rights to do so, so with the ROM it's fine. Uh, but they didn't actually do the basic stuff to get the SNES emulator like cleared copyright-wise, because its license is, you have to talk to everyone who's uh, put code into this, and then we'll, we'll clear it, each yeah. individual developer for their code you're going to use. And then they're like, ah, oh, we talked to like two people, it's fine. And then this person on Twitter, uh, Lord Nightmares, like, they didn't talk to me. You know, you didn't, there was no copyright assignment from any of these contributors that, like, I know. You have to get all of the permission or remove the code, which is, you know, a lot of it is, like, expansion code. So, like, you know, this game won't work without someone's contribution, yeah. but you can remove that contribution, compile it without that contribution, and not talk to that person. That would be fine. But there's a whole bunch of people in the replies following up this, like, they didn't talk to me, and, like, I know my code's been used here. And it's just the case of they just didn't do that. Even when it's open source, you know, they literally just went, should I read the license? No, fuck it. Just fire it in. It's just so just wild because they, what you can do this yourself. Yeah. In minutes. Yeah. Free. Yeah. No need for Steam. Yeah. But, What's going on? But if you want it in your Steam library, you can charge the rights owner. Or pay them rather. <sighs> I mean, yeah. I guess there's like there's a tiny the value in this is that you save like I don't know sixty seconds maybe yep. a minute and it happens to be via Steam. I don't think that's <laughs> worth ten bucks <laughs> no. because it's not even like it's going to be well configured. Yeah, nor is it nor is it going to the original developer, which is yep. a lot of the reason people will support a lot of these like you know game revivals and stuff. Is oh I like that game. Well, are you going to give someone in completely different your money for it? when, you know, you, you might as well have a better experience doing it for free, because is it fully legal? No. Is it, you know, uh, morally completely fine in terms of the spirit of things? 
maybe. And this is where, you know, um, they get into worse stuff overall, which is yeah. where the preservation can go. Because you can look at this and go, oh, they're being leeches, fine, whatever. But then it's when they start sending takedowns to archives because they own them now and they want to have the pre preservation in their garden. Then you really have this issue, especially when it comes to prototypes and the fact that it's like defunct publishers upon they're getting from like so much was uh, conglomerated into Infogrames, which then renamed Atari. So much stuff from Hasbro and all just come in and they just they just walked up to these people who were you know this company's dead. They walked up and went, "Can we have all this stuff for like a couple thousand? Sure, work away." And they're like, "Ah, this all of all of retro gaming history is technically ours now." So SNES Central, the like site for hosting stuff, said. Pico demand that I remove the unreleased English version of Iron Commando. Unreleased English version? As in, yeah. no commercial, like, things. I mean, obviously there's breaches, like, legally, but commercially speaking, like, this wasn't available. So it's like, oh, you want to play this this cool bit of gaming history? Here you go. You can only get it here. And then uh, Pico bought the rights and went, no, that's ours now, get rid of it. And that happened a decent while ago, and SNES Central say, you know, copyright law should be 20 years by default which i think is certainly interesting but at this point you can't see why you're like jesus christ but what they say is they buy up defunct ips release poor quality physical releases they only find out about the games when someone finds a prototype then they send threats so they have all these rights and it's just waiting for someone to sort of appear so they can snap that's basically how they seem to operate and the games aren't even good and they don't fix them either yeah because it's just ip ownership and then Forest of Illusion. This was an interesting one where there's a Glover prototype that Forest of Illusion had up. And then Pico were like, that's ours, remove it. And then Forest of Illusion like, no, this literally isn't ours. I've done a whole bunch of work on this prototype to make it playable. This is nothing to do with you. It's the same right, but like this isn't this isn't going to impede with your product. And ultimately this ended up being a uh, being a misunderstanding. And they're kind of on good terms now. But generally speaking, it was Pico going, that's our game. We bought it. I don't care if people get to play it. They have to play it on my terms. And that's how it came across real bad. And that's, it's just, it's really annoying whenever people, like, people are trying really hard. Like, all these community people for no profit. And then someone comes along with the, with enough money to buy rights in the first place and stamps all over it. Yeah, and it's not like they're even funding anything interesting yeah. with it like okay there's some a, of the physical a, there's a releases tiny bit of that, sure yeah. there's a tiny bit of that we'll um, get into like this stuff in steam yeah it's just scummy yeah there's there's no That's value for consumers it's it's yep. rubbish yep um i mean for the, for the user sentiment like mm. I, again if, if you just go through yep. pico has walked into a place where they are or he I suppose is not yep. welcome at all Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just just continually made every single wrong move. Yeah, so you kind of from to go back to what we we're talking about the start in terms of like the I believe it was um, uh, it was Gamespot I think was the only place I saw had actually reported as a footnote that people were displeased with this. But every other site that I saw was just the uncle. Oh, it's Glover's back, sweet, cool. And I'm not going to begrudge people specifically for just kind of going ah, here's the headline. But it's like when it comes to consumer value, I think. Anyone who wants to buy Glover should probably be aware that people in uh, people who have been involved with the, you know, I don't know why there's a Glover community, but of course it's video games, there's going to be. People love retro games, people love that stuff. But whenever you have a lot of people say, do not financially support this release, Pico Interactive is one of the biggest obstacles against actual preservation. And you're like, oh, that might have been helpful for people to know. Yeah. Especially when it's like, ah, oh, there's a cute little game for a fiver, I played that when I was younger. I wonder, he's like, who's getting the money? I think we now the, understand what the era of commercial preservation actually means. Because yep. it doesn't seem like there's really much preserving going on with this commercial preservation. It's it's just gathering IP and exploiting it. That's what it comes across, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, th this is the thing is, like, the comparison I definitely want to make is, you know, what happens when a community has freedom? What happens whenever a community is operating, you know, isn't actually under attack by you know the the law in the cases specifically we see um the decompilation projects for super mario 64 and ocarina of time where nintendo can't legally touch those because they're just hey we're reverse engineering this and that's protected by law 
the actual projects are just obviously people outside the law are going to throw the game assets in and then play the game but it, without that you now have these games obviously ocarina of time isn't released yet even though the decom's complete but you've got perfect pc ports which means no matter how far in the future if every nintendo 64 is torched to the ground in some weird apocalyptic event as long as there's a pc running and the decom code or the pc port the incredible game that basically started video games in a way, Ocarina of Time and Super Mario 64, two still the greatest games ever made, just playable forever. Yeah. Complete. Obviously, there's possibility for change as well, which is cool, but they're preserved and they're playable. Then you look at like Night Dive, who are the modern vintage gamer, isn't uh, works for those. They preserve old games on PC by going, yeah, we'll get the right, and then we'll make this, we'll release it on PC again with loads of QOL, so it's playable on modern systems. And that's like a really good example. But then when a commercial group or commercially focused group does it, it ends up being per emulator re-releases like we've seen here. Like we've seen with Nintendo, like we've seen with Sony dropping um, PSP emulator stuff on PS4, I think it was. They're like, it's a bit lazy. Yeah. Where's the where's the effort? Where's the care? Now, well, yeah, the balance. Oh yeah, of course. Because we did do some research in with Pico. They, they do actually pay some community mm -hmm. members to handle some of these ports and sometimes upgrade the games. Yep. Uh, they do sometimes work with original devs and artists. Yep. The physical release thing that they do seems pretty well considered and cool. Yeah, not perfect, but... Yeah, uh, they, they, well, they did a Kickstarter for um, action figures mm -hmm. for Switchblade. Yeah. Like, that's neat. Yeah. Uh, so, like, by all accounts, you know, there is a bit of a passion project here. Mm -hmm. He's claiming only to be paying, you know, like himself and his bills, basically. Yeah. But I think the thing is, ultimately, you're just hoovering stuff up and centralizing it and then taking down the thing that actually makes preservation be, you know, be robust <laughs> yeah. to not be fragile, which is that it's hosted everywhere and you can't take them all down. Yeah, it's this thing where it's like, it's a philosophical difference where like, I, it, it almost annoys me to have to talk so much shit about the output because going through interviews and stuff with that, uh, the, I can't, I can't even remember his name now, but the, the founder Pico, it actually really seems super passionate, seems to really care about you know, video games and doing all this cool stuff. I mean, by their own, what's it they say? They buy old intellectual properties to do cool stuff. And that's a nice, you're like, yeah, of course, work away. But it's the execution that comes so, it's not even like it's standoffish because he says he doesn't want to, you know, make enemies of people. He just does by virtue of what he's doing, which is this really awkward case of, there's no, there's no room in preservation. There's no room in the future of the history of video games to gather all in one place and hoard it. Yeah. Even if there's some reason, it's just that's not people want people want uh, f games to be available for everyone to play forever, because otherwise you lose this. You know, you lose the bedrock of this incredible industry. And you're selling that for ten bucks in Steam. Yep. And there's no difference from just grabbing the ROM. Yeah. And you're, you're just doing that shipping with an <laughs> yeah. open source emulator. At least make a good product. Yeah, like uh, that's it. That's the bit where it feels that makes it feel like a scheme more yeah. than a product. Yep. And I think that's why it particularly is going to sting. Absolutely. It's like, oh, cool. The thing that I was passionate about has been hoovered up and is now part of a scheme. Great. Mm. Yep. So yeah. that's, that's, I think that's kind of it for today, but I would like to just say I would really hope that uh, outlets start to look at the first replies to tweets whenever they're on critically reporting stories. Because yes. that, cause I, I was genuinely shocked. That it was GameSpot of all people had a footnote going, ah, people are a bit upset about this, whereas no one else mentioned it at all. Well, got to pump out articles. I think that Indeed. just ends up, you know, sort of. Indeed. Just kind of ends up going down like that. But anyway, mm. now you know, and yep. uh, I would say there's probably other means of, of getting these games that don't exactly yep. involve supporting this uh, commercial preservation that really seems to be good for nobody other than the commercial preservers. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, the, it's a little bit more effort, but... Well, I mean, that's the thing about Glover. It seems like the, the remaster effort may be okay, but based on the history, I wouldn't be too sure if it didn't make things a little bit worse or a little bit weird when it's... I'm sure the community's done it better, and obviously they're... You know, emulators aren't illegal. Emulators aren't piracy. They can be if you don't own the ROM, but if you buy a copy of Glover, get the equipment to dump it to your own PC, work away. As everyone does. What, as everyone does, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%, all of us. Yep. Yep. Just rum dumping all day. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a case of, well, I mean, there's actually a really, there's an interesting uh, version of that with, um, like, Warcraft 3, I think, where it's like, 
uh, maybe I'm misremembering, but there's so many cases of, oh, disc broke. I guess I'll have to pirate it instead. Or, you know, lost the disc, still the key. I'll use oh, yeah. piracy makes this stuff playable despite physical mal- malfunctions. I've done that all the time. But you've got games. the you've got the license yourself. You, you you have the right to play it. You have the right to own it because you paid for it. But things have gone wrong and you can't. <sighs> the word and the spirit of things can be yeah. quite frustrating with digital, I suppose. Indeed. But yep. anyway, that's it from us. Mm-hmm. That's what you think. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.